Hello everyone, welcome to Some How I Design. This is Yunus Emin Algel and today we are going to be beginning our advanced level video and which is going to be SUV modeling out of the design sketches that my dear friend Yusuf Atlamaz provided, uh, provided me. Uh, thanks to him we have beautiful design sketches over here. On the right hand side we have some initial conceptual doodles that he prepared before. And uh, as you can see, he had uh, different ideations. Uh, we can we can try to we can try to read from 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 the design sketches, yeah. And then I have prepared a overall SUV volumetric data over here. Um, these uh, rectangular uh, surfaces uh, represents uh, Hyundai Tucson um, overall dimensions. And the proportional data, uh, proportional um, arrangements over here, outline, roof line, and the um, wheels, yeah, front overhang uh, and rear, uh, over uh, front overhang and the rear, um, and also we have kind of side view sketch, but as you can see, this is proportionally exaggerated. So that means wheels are bigger than it's supposed to be. Uh, some volumes are uh, over imagined, but of course this happens when a designer uh, wants wants to show us uh, his good work in a more appealing way. Yeah. So this means we are kind of referencing this base uh, proportional uh, sketch, but we are going to be we are gonna end up touching some features over here, um, starting from the wheels, of course. Uh, yeah, and out of them we will try to create the volumes of the data. And over here on top we have a one three quarter uh, design sketch, kind of finalized version of the uh, design. And yeah, we are kind of we are kind of aim to reach that level as a three D data. And we have one uh, rear quarter uh, sketch over here, which is kind of finalized as well. Um, yeah, we kind of aim to reach that level as a 3D 3D volumetric data in, as in, in a first in a first glance. Yeah, and this is kind of little um, side fun project me and uh, Yusuf is going on uh, working on at the moment. And at certain points, uh, we've been thinking to overview the uh, result of the volumetric shapes, and hopefully, uh, he will he will give us some additional design directions, maybe as a doodle wise, or he is really capable of creating 3D models as well. And yeah, if this is kind of we are kind of working through, consider. Uh, consider yourself guys sitting in a sitting in a design studio and given a task and uh, you are asked to create 3d volume shapes uh, according to the design sketch this is a real case scenario it is not like you are having blueprints all the time remember my mid-level tutorial guides uh, we were modeling vertical mouse which was already existed in the market so we have certain directions that we are supposed to go but in this case, we have those beautiful sketches, but uh, they are uh, in the end 2D, right? When 2D sketches going to the 3D part, it's kind of uh, various, yeah. You you just change some stuff when when you when you see when you see the 3D data, you change your mind and or you are inspired by 3D that data, uh, and then additionally you create something more. Or you change your mind, uh, so to say. Uh, yeah, this is going to be like in and out situation, and we're gonna try and fail big time, of course. And the first thing first, always, always treat uh, you are like sketching on a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, when you are sketching on a blank sheet of paper, it's like you are uh, kind of drawing some lines. In this case, we have blank 3D space. 
and we are gonna again create some curves on it but this time three three dimensionally and then after you uh, create your 2d sketches on the paper you just try to yeah paint over it to create some surfaces and highlight on 2d sketch yeah and in this case <clears throat> those are going to be our 3d surfaces and those surfaces and uh, volumetric 3d data will guide us through the design and will show us the way it's like <clears throat> yeah so this is the advanced stuff uh, in the end this is this is the real case scenario and advanced stuff but yeah without further ado uh go get yourself a cup of coffee or tea and yeah lay down and enjoy the video if you are watching if you are willing to follow up with me at the same time <clears throat> i will be i will be giving you this data as you see in this on the screen uh to at least get you guys going on yeah if you are willing to you can you can uh, go uh, go along with me to, uh, through the process yeah this is it without further ado let's dive in yeah let's have a look around real quick i have imported imported uh one wheel data set so that this will uh, yeah give us a guide which we already have as a as a curve but having as a wheel is also uh is also good to have yeah you can you can download in any 3d free to use download uh, websites i have I, i'm i have uh, created wheel lip as an initial and then trying to get this uh greenhouse shape uh, over the design sketch we are gonna trace design sketch real quick and intersect the two uh, curves and create curve fillet out of it and doing some fine tunings of course uh, gonna extend back or yeah realign g2 curve i'm extending back to capture the sketch I have been using a uh, curve curvature locator to yeah to have to have something uh, to have good quality of curve yeah offset those curves and rotating that uh, matching with the design uh, sketch yeah in the first part of the video uh, will be more or less creating the overall curve network and then try to match that curve network into 3d space pretty much the same thing that we were uh, doing in the previous uh, lessons yeah creating the belt line curve trying to mimic the sketch as a first glance I am I am feeling like am I kind of managed to am I, can I can I manage to uh, get the design as a proportional wise yeah I was uh, asking questions to myself in my in my head like repeatedly am I doing the right thing with that curve or is it that does that seem right or wrong yeah it's always questioning you are always questioning what you do when you are uh, creating something from zero which is really hard by the way i mean uh, creating surfaces creating surfaces from from the sketch is really hard thing to do this is why i call this uh, tutorial guide advanced tutorial series yeah try to capture the front overhang actually yeah um, vertically lower down one curve and rotating that pretty much uh, the fundamental movements fundamental movements of the modeling yeah creating curves rotating them pulling them aligning them together yeah yeah let's mirror that layer and let's move these curves from the y-axis yeah this is 
you know, it's like you are sketching in 3D space. It is kind of requires some logic behind to understand that. It takes time. I mean, if you if you can't do it, don't don't be hard on yourself. Uh, even me working in the industry always kind of uh, make me think that do I kind of get it or not? Yeah, am I am I be able to uh, manage those surfaces or am I gonna fail? It's always the questions in my <laughs> in my head before before I uh, begin to model. But as you go, it kind of resolve itself. Yeah, it's kind of you find you find the right things to do, and the things that you've done make sense at a certain point, and you 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 feel like yeah, light bulbs uh, your head. Even even uh, creating the curves uh, at the moment kind of uh, make you understand the surfaces in the 3D space. Yeah, this is like uh, shaping uh, gradually, and yeah, looking at the sketches, these 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 needed to be offset a little bit actually, so that so I moved on the Y axis as well once again. Yeah, hovering around the model. Yeah, duplicate those uh, fundamental curves and yeah, locating them, capturing the form uh, as a curve network in three D is really hard. It's so hard than than one can imagine. But when you see the end result, it's like yeah, re really motivating stuff from here to arriving some sort of uh, level that you can talk on as a design wise yeah it's just block out curve network so this this is a little bit tricky uh, since those uh, wheels are getting smaller getting more realistic when it goes to 3d how should we react to those um, vertical angular uh, DTRL shape should we place that in the same way as it is in the sketch or should we move that a little bit right yeah or inwards a little bit this is this is something this is something you find your answers in 3d when you are beginning to create the surfaces yeah this is, there are there are so many questions uh, unanswered at the moment So many things unanswered yeah you are just trying to you are not only you're not only trying to find the curves into in, into the space you are also trying to find the answers how to create them uh, relying on the design sketches yeah because in the end all that make make sense um, when you find the true proportions of the surfaces yeah the sin this is pretty much yeah we are as a block out curve network shape we are pretty much there when it comes to front overhang and bonnets it's just bunch of changes when it comes to the curve network but you can you can be loose with it just it only know that it takes huge amount of time it takes really good amount of time because this is something this is something hard and this is uh, something that you will encounter when you when you work in a design studio yeah this is totally a uh, work case scenario and there are some different scenarios as well like facelift projects most of the uh, components of the vehicle is already there and you are just changing the several components not all but let's say only the grill changes or only the headlamp changes yeah or small uh, decorative parts changes but this is one of the um those 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 projects actually are easier than uh, creating one project from zero yeah because so many things are already answered let's say the assembling line is already answered 
you got you got to respect that informations let's say or or the parting lines are already there you are just you are just giving a frame and you are filling in to that frame to create new component design but in this case we are trying to create something out of nothing only the 2d design sketches which is really really hard but since this is a fun little project we don't have to be 100% precise of course uh, yeah at, at certain at certain design projects from the from the industry it's pretty much the same when 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 it is yeah it is in the conceptual level yeah you just you just um, walk around as you wish until engineers come and say something yeah you hey you cannot do this because this is this is not gonna work like that we have that part behind you cannot pull that surface in 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 that much yeah but unless uh, it, this is really free to enjoy times when you when you uh, initially initially begin to work on the project The thing is, I have I have created uh, additional um, curve network study besides this one that you are watching at the moment. Uh, but at some point, I don't know what happened. I lost it. So, but it's it's okay. We uh, it was just pretty much the same thing that I do here. I have changed the editing software and that is why I kind of lost it, I guess. But only that part. It's nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm looking at the final design sketch and yeah, this is... It's not matching with the side view. So there are some stuff different than the side view that I was referencing, yeah? So I am just in my head deciding which one to follow, which one, which feature we can eliminate or which one we should uh, strictly follow, yeah? You see that DTRL has moved right to the, to the wheel a little bit because of the volumetric proportional changes. Yeah, we have more or less try to see the 3d curve network over here in the when it comes to the front overhang yeah kind of makes sense those were too much crown so i pushed them a little bit in yeah guys this is there is like a five minutes more that I do the pretty much the same things. Uh, I enjoy watching the rest when it comes to the surfacing, initial surfacing. I will jump right back in. Yeah, yes.
yeah at, at this at this part i have lost of lost the rest of the video of curve networking so uh, jump right back here i have changed the front overhang a little and then uh, creating the main surfaces by using the rail tool it's just i'm railing the curves along the uh, vertical di direction yeah and then the angle i have changed the curve network to make that a little bit uh, similar to the um, uh, front quarters uh, front quarter realistic sketch yeah this is why i have changed the front overhang because i have uh, draw i have drew the curves according to the side view but then i uh, changed my mind to uh, yeah show uh, show the uh, similar block out shapes at least according to the front quarter uh, sketch it made more sense at that moment yeah i have revisiting the curves again this is pretty much in and out situation yeah you just <clears throat> develop some certain certain level of data set and then you revisit them maybe uh, maybe yeah the next day you have changed your mind yeah it just happens there is this chamfresh uh, bonnet highlight over there so i will try to capture that one actually again simple yeah uh, curved application and skin or rail tool that i use I'm just trying to block out the surface over here. Uh, always lower the degrees CV layout that you have. At the moment, rail tool freaks out, so I have changed the sweep mode to the parallel instead of the previous selection. I've noticed this is kind of rotated a little because uh, the curve that I was referencing is not in the in the center of the grid. So I, I am just struggling to <laughs> struggling to place them in, in 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 the middle of the grid. Yeah. Since I have snapped them again, just get rid of the chamfer surface over there. And the thing is, I'm going to be delaying the uh, mirrored side surface and then detaching the uh, surfaces right in the middle so that I can use layer mirror tool. I'm just going to be open the mirror selection uh, through the object lister. Uh, and then, yeah, just blocking out the surfaces, extending curve on surface. This is just the manual, um, manual carving, let's say, so to say, sculpting. Yeah, I have <coughs> opened up the symmetry history. Yeah, pretty much shaping the bonnet. Next step is to add that chamfer over there. Yeah. But it kind of goes down from the from the right hand side. So I have decreased the CV rows and then G0 align by adding extra CV row in the blending option so that it kind of follows the first row of the CV. You cannot uh, you cannot make the same uh, forms of surfaces as in one go. It just you just uh, try to find the initial steps of the surfacing what you can what you can see in the sketch is the last version of the surfacings yeah pretty much more or less uh, but you have to think in your head that how would it look before the let's say plottings secondary surfaces it's just you you should kind of solve the puzzle by going back in the time uh, finding the initial um, block out uh, surfaces and then on top of that you are going to be creating secondary surfaces which are the blends or big billets and then the uh, third level of surfaces which are the small smaller fillets considerably yeah in this this is this is why it is it is really hard from creating the surfaces out of sketch it's just when you look at the sketch it, it is all highlighted beautifully and all the details pretty much uh worked out 
uh yeah you see the um pretty much kind of rockstar final version of the design but you cannot have that uh, final version as in one go you just in one go you can have all pretty much the blockout shape that we have at the moment in the screen here yeah, on the screen so i'm just trying to capture that angular shape in in 3d how would it look like what should how can i place that in a correct way yeah always lower your cvs uh, it's just uh, regular settings of the tools that I use here is I don't know why it's just more CVs than I uh, normally use but I'm just decreasing them yeah draft surface to create some intersection there at certain point you just have a look at the design and not look that much anymore yeah because you have to you have to create the foundation of the surfaces you gotta build uh, in a logical way so that you can when you when you revisit the surfaces you can kind of play along with it so that is why you uh, kind of uh you don't need to just unsee the sketch don't look at that one. Focus on your uh, 3D surface development, and then later on, later on, think of it. How how can we get um, think of how can we get closer to the sketch? Yeah. So there is this gap between those um, those features. But in the sketch, we cannot see that gap. This is this is something that we should uh, talk over with with the designer. Yeah. So I just untrim that surface and trim convert that so that we have uh, touching edges uh, into surfacing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just creating one draft surface to to understand how would that corner can blend together. Yeah. There is this kind of air inlet, but as we go in the sketch of course when you look at the form it there should be some gap between but we cannot kind of understand it from the from the sketch because since it is through look over there on the doodle there is one but on the final finalized sketch there isn't so we gotta we gotta understand along the way so i'm just i cannot hold myself to add secondary surfaces which are big blends uh, to see how surfaces are talking to each other yeah because when you when you kind of add the blends uh, into the surfaces you kind of begin to um, finalize the model and it kind of looks sharp and clean and beautiful so it's just tempting to add those yeah secondary surfaces always but uh, in the next step, I will delete them back because of the surface changes. But we can see how would it do. It, it, it seems like it's going too steep. It's just directly going inward. It, we just tuck that surfaces in too much. It seems like, yeah, we just got to pull them, pull them back a little. This is too, too radical too radical angle it's just going directly into the wheel maybe we can just pull them back and refill it again yeah i'm just opening the wheels to see how would it look about the gap then i realized i should add wheel lip uh, in a in a in a usual case the first thing that you do is the wheel lip actually because you're gonna refer your wheel arch according to that lip so like uh, I find myself forgetting that and <laughs> and adding that to, to the to the surfaces by just creating one line. It just usually tends to tuck in from the from the lower part. So I am extending that reference surface, and then we will project that 
curves onto that surface. We can directly trim out from from there, but I I'd like to create those uh, ang angular curves that we are uh, that we end up having at the moment, and then delete the verticals, just straight ones. Um, we should I guess we should kind of create one clean surface patch layout when it comes to the wheel lip because we're gonna use that as a reference for creating our wheel arch and if you are aligning uh, if you are using a reference data it should be clean because otherwise the um, the next surfaces that you are going to be aligning or kind of trimming or whatever you do will act uh, like in a wrong way so I'm detaching the surface I'm detaching the surface uh, kind of into into a squarish uh, four edged um, network so that we can create a fit curve out of it. So you see it's detached in a wrong way. I'm going to attach them back and then uh, use fit curve tool again to create one simple clean arc with five degree. So Yeah, so then we can delete the re rebuild curves we don't need them anymore we can get rid of them yeah and then same thing for the other side as well get rid of the re get rid of the curves and then skin this too without using crown value it's just add the degrees in the correct way when it comes to the surface so that we have a clean wheel lip that we can use in our design angular from the front view and yeah clean surface so we are aligning that feature to that lip in the end so this is this is how the wheel lips are done you just gotta tuck it tuck it in that vertical curve a little bit it's just never straight it, it is never straight so we are i have greenhouse over there i ha remember i've uh, lost one video in between I will rebuild, rebuild that uh, greenhouse uh, for, for the next video, which isn't a big deal, but don't worry, you just, you, you didn't miss anything. So yeah, we are coming to an end pretty much, guys, thank you for uh, watching this until here and uh, tune, be tuned for the next steps and um, yeah, see you on the next one. Cheers, bye bye.